Hello everyone, my name is Jackie and today I have for you a video that's been a long time in the making because I'm finally making my last part of my books by black authors I want to read series. I initially started the series during the summer and I was supposed to finish it during the summer. But I filmed the last video, I edited the last video, somehow I don't know how everything got deleted my finished video and all the clips. I had nothing to work with. I was not in the mood to refilm this for very, very long. <laughs> but I really wanted to finish this, so I'm going to do it now. Actually, in the meantime, I've read a couple of books that were supposed to be in this video, so I will mention them just for a moment at the end of the video. But now I'll tell you some more of the books I want to read. By now, they're just the books that I, I have left, so there's no horror-specific video or something like. So, let's get into this. I'm going to look down a lot because I have my laptop here so that I can tell you the synopsis of all the books. So the first book is Genesis Begins Again by Alicia D. Williams, which is the story of a 13-year-old girl who's filled with self-loathing and internalized racism and she has a verbally abusive family. And she has a list of 96 things she hates about herself, like her skin is so dark people call her charcoal and eggplant, even her own family. Her family is always being put out of the house, belongings laid out on the sidewalk or for the world to see. And when she reaches number 100, the question is will she continue on or can she find the strength to begin again and hopefully learn to love herself. The next book I want to read is I'm Not Dying With You Tonight by Kimberly Jones and Jilly Siegel. And this is about two girls, one of them black and one white, who go to the same school but have nothing to do with each other. One night they go to the football game and everything descends into chaos. Chaos born from violence and hate that unexpectedly throws them together. They hardly understand each other's points of views, but they only have each other to get through the night. The next book is Dear Martin by Nick Stone, which is about Justice, who is at the top of his class and set for the Ivy League, but none of this matters to the police officer who just put him in handcuffs. He left behind his rough neighborhood but he can't escape the scorn of his former peers or the ridicule of his new classmates. So he looks to the teachings of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and starts a journal writing to him. But one day he goes driving with his best friend, um, who has the windows rolled down, music up, and this off-duty white cop doesn't really like that. Words fly, shots are fired, and Justice and his friends are caught in the crosshairs, and in the media fallout it's Justice who is under attack. The sequel to this book, Dear Justice, was released this year, so I'm really excited to hopefully get to that soon. The next book is The Black Kids by Christina Hammonds Reed, which is set in 1992 during the Rodney King riots. Ashley Bennett is a rake black girl and her, her and her friends are living a charmed life. It's the end of senior year, but everything changes when four LAPD officers are acquitted after beating a black man named Rodney King half to death. And suddenly Ashley is not just one of the girls, she's one of the black kids. And violent protests engulf LA and the city burns and Ashley tries to continue her life as normal. But with her world splintering around her, Ashley along with the rest of LA is left to question who is the us and who is the them. The next book is All American Boys by Jason Reynolds and Brandon Keeley. And this book is about two boys, Rashad and Quinn. One is black and one is white, but both is American. And they both faced the unspeakable truth that racism and prejudice didn't die after the civil rights movement. So it starts when a lady trips Rashad over at the store, making him drop a bag of chips. And it didn't matter that Rashad said that he wasn't trying to steal, that it was an accident. The cop just kept pounding him. And after that Rashad was in the hospital for very long because it looked like he was stealing. Because he was a black kid in baggy clothes. The other boy, Quinn, is the white kid who saw it. He saw his best friend's older brother beating the daylights out of a classmate. And at first he doesn't tell a soul, because he doesn't really understand it. And the whole thing was caught on camera, but then the, stu but then the school and the nation start to divide on what happens. Blame spreads like wildfire, fed by ugly words like racism and police brutality. And Quinn realizes he's got to understand it, because bystander or not, 
he's a part of history. He just has to figure out what side of history that will be. The next book is American Street by Evie Savoy, which tells the story of a young girl, Fabiola, who just came from Haiti to the US, but her mother was detained by US immigration, leaving Fabiola to navigate her loud American cousins, and the grittiness of Detroit's west side, the new school, and a surprising romance all on her own. And just as she finds a footing in the strange new world, a dangerous proposition presents itself, and Fabiola soon realizes that freedom comes at a cost. Trapped at the crossroads of an impossible choice, will she pay the price for the American dream? The next book is Black Girl Unlimited by Echo Brown. This book is heavily autobiographical and infused with magical realism. Um, it's a fearless exploration of the, the intersections of poverty, sexual violence, depression, racism and sexism. And it tells the story of Echo Brown, who is a wizard from the East Side. There's magic everywhere. New portals begin to open when Echo transfers to the rich school on the West Side. And each day Echo travels between two worlds, leaving a brother, her friends and a piece of herself behind on the East Side. There are dangers of leaving behind the place that made you. Echo soon realizes there's pain flowing through everyone around her. And the black wheel of depression threatens to undo everything she's worked for. Next book is Smash It by Francina Simone, which tells the story of Olivia James, who is done with letting her insecurities best her. So she writes a fuck it list. On that list, be bold, do the thing that scares me, learn to take a compliment, stand out instead of back. So she kicks off by trying out for each school musical, saying yes to a date and making new friends. However, with change comes a lot of missteps. And being bold means following her heart. So when Liv's heart is interested in three different guys and two of them are, and two of them are her best friends, what will happen? What is she supposed to do when she gets dumped by a guy she's not even dating? And how does one smash it after the humiliation of being friendzoned? In Liv's own words, fuck it, what's the worst that can happen? A lot, apparently. The next book is This Is My America by Kim Johnson, in which 17-year-old Tracy writes a week to Innocence X every week asking them to help her father, an innocent black man, on death row. And after seven years, Tracy is running out of time. Her dad has only 267 days to live. And then the unthinkable happens and the police arrive at night and arrest her older brother, who is accused of killing a white girl. Determined to save her brother, Tracy investigates what really happened. Um, but will Tracy and her family survive the uncovering of the skeletons of their Texas town's racist history that still haunt the present? The next book is The Sum of Everything by Julian Winters, which is about a comic book geek called Wesley, who excels at two things, slacking off at his job and pining after his best friend Nico. Advice from friends, 90s art rock songs and online dating articles aren't really helping him much with his secret crush, and his dream job at Once Upon a Page, the local used bookstore, is threatened when a coffee shop franchise wants to buy the property. To top it all off, his annoying brother needs wedding planning advice. And when all three problems converge, Wes comes face to face with the one thing he's been avoiding, adulthood. Now confronted with reality, can Wes balance saving the bookstore and his strained sibling relationship? And can he win the heart of his crush too? And the last book on this list I technically read, but that's been ages ago and since then there are supposed to have come out new books in this series, so I definitely would have to reread them. But it's Knots and Crosses by Mallory Blackman, which is set in an alternate reality where the crosses are the members of the dark-skinned ruling class and the knots are the colorless members of the underclass. And it's about Sefi, who is a cross, and Callum, who is a knot. And they have been friends since early childhood, but that's all they're ever gonna be. Or should be. Because in their world, knots and crosses simply don't mix. But of course, the two fall in love with each other and it gets very, very dangerous. So yeah, that's all the books on my list. Um, as I said, I've already read two of the books that were supposed to be in this video. I've read Black Enough by Evie Savoy, which is an anthology of short stories by a lot of different authors that I really enjoyed. And I've read Checkpot by Nick Stone, which is absolutely amazing. It's about a girl who, who works at a shop and one night to Christmas she sells some lotto tickets and one of those tickets wins, but the 
prize gets never claimed and she tries to find the person who wins it because she could really need the money and apparently the person doesn't care. So I really enjoyed those two books. Um, yeah, if you've read any of the books I talked about in this video, let me know down below, but please no spoilers. And yeah, as I've said, I've read a couple of books already. I read the two that I talked about earlier, but I also already read a couple that I talked about in previous videos. So I will at one point make a video about all the books I've read from this list. But yeah, that's everything for this video and I'll talk to you in my next one. Bye!